I've been headhunted as a hired gun. My mission is to drop into one of the many almost virgin lakes and come out with a report. Oh, some kind of a search bait. Come here, Loon, take that thing. That's sharp, by the way, folks. When the brake line comes along like this, it turns in here. This is freaking me out. These fish are incredible. Scoop! Now, the wind just picked up. This little wee bit of wind pumping out big, big, big walleye like this. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Sale, the outdoors superstore. Coleman, the outdoor company. Muscal, proudly Canadian since 1951. Cooper Tires, life's a road trip. Come on, let's go. And Prince Craft Boats, dominate the waters. Without a doubt, the ultimate luxury in fishing is the lodge experience. Heck, they feed you there, they guide you to the fish, it is the ultimate. However, there is an alternative. It's called the outpost can. There, you bring in your own food, you cook it, and you guide yourself to the fish. It's a good alternative to a lodge, and it can be an awesome experience. This week's episode is where you get to see the perks of having a job as a fishing show host. Yeah, what a day. I've been headhunted as a hired gun by Dan and Brandy McLaughlin of White River Air. My mission is to drop into one of the many almost virgin lakes that they access and come out with a report. I'm in the Algoma region of Ontario, and my quarry is the ever-popular walleye. Today, I'm on Burton Lake. It's a typical Northern Ontario walleye lake with the usual rock, weed, and wood structures. I'm here in the last week of May with the air temperature in the upper 60s and the water in the high 50s, thus putting these fish at least into and hopefully past the post-spawn mode. I've headed to a part of the lake that Dan suggested, and I think I know why. I can hear some running water along the shore, which means there's probably some incoming water close by. It's something you should always look for when fishing for early season walleye. With a quick scout of the depth finder, I also see a distinct turn in the brake line. Although I have a GPS, I have dropped a marker buoy on the point of the turn. These things are essential in precision fishing, as you'll see throughout this show. The spot looks perfect. Now I have to figure out the fish. This lake is basically a little bowl, round lake, and 17, 18 feet of water out here. Comes up to the shoreline there with about a nine, nine and 10 feet here. It looks like the fish are sitting on this break. So I, I like to throw a, some kind of a search bait to see if I can get some shallow fish. I pretty much start all my spring, summer, and early fall fishing days with search baits. An angler can quickly tell if the fish are on an aggressive bite. If they are, then have at her. If not, the backup plan is slow and steady. And it looks like that's what might be happening today. On days when walleye aren't on an aggressive bite, a jig is probably the best bait to try and figure out their feeding mood. With Dan picking me up in a matter of hours, speed is of the essence. In order to put the odds in my favor, I've got to add some meat to my jig. With the water being cold, minnows are my favorite choice. Take a little, these are four inch grubs. Early in the year, you don't really need the action. So I bust off the tail. I put that body on like that. And it does a couple of things. It adds the color, three things. It adds some buoyancy to the bait. And then when you put your minnow on, there's a big daddy minnow. It stops the minnow from riding up the hook. <laughs> Get a load of that dude if you can see him. Oh, man. Oh, I'm not going to play around with you, fish. I'm getting you in the net so I can get something in the boat. Look at this dude. Look at this walleye, folks. Oof. Holy man. Wait till you see this puppy. He told me there's biggins in here. Oh my God. I think I'm gonna have a great day. Wow. He just, he grabbed it, didn't thump it, but he grabbed it and swam with it. Just, oh. There he goes. Whew. I'm gonna have a great day. This is gonna be fun. The brake line along the shore. There's an incoming stream here somewhere close by. And I can hear it, I can't see it coming in. But the brake line comes along like this, out far, and then it turns in here. It comes in closer to shore here, and turns back out at the marker buoy. So you got a nice little indentation. When working a brake line or drop off like I'm on today, you first need to understand why the fish are there. In simple terms, look at it like we as humans look at roads or trails. 
It's a directional path, which in our minds is the easiest way to travel from point A to point B. A brake line is exactly that to a fish, an easy way to swim around the lake at a desired depth while searching for food. Here's how I'm fishing this brake line today. I start by working the top, which is dropping from a flat that extends out from the shore. Next, I fish the actual drop or slope, working a variety of depths. Finally, I hit the bottom where the drop levels off to the lake basin. Since I'm working a relatively short stretch, I can thoroughly cover the entire area. Oddly enough, fish will oftentimes be sitting at the same depth along the break throughout the entire body of water. Something to keep in mind. Oh, well, that hurt, that hook set. Look at, right off my marker, boy. Oh, how gorgeous is that fish right there? What has he got going on here? Check this out. Let me come up to you. I'd like to say I was an expert and tell you what it was, but I'm not an expert and let me just touch. <laughs> it's either a slug, a snail, or something like that, or it's part of the big walleye. They are such a cool fish and iconic in the north. That's for sure. You didn't think I knew that word iconic, did you? Huh? <laughs> Pretty smart, eh? Napanee. Secondary school. Not that smart. I got a knot right there. <laughs> okay, dummy. Fix that one. Don't you look at my minnow. The usual way of presenting a jig to a walleye is either casting or dropping straight below the boat. But trust me on this one. Trolling a jig with an electric motor or a little kicker can often be a deadly walleye tactic. There's a fish trolling my jig. Walleye, yeah. Boy, they, they shake their heads. When people say walleye don't fight, they're crazy. Oh, what a gorgeous fish. What a gorgeous fish. Put a big chunk of a minnow on, and that's probably a key factor here. Oh, there's that minnow right there, it just fell out. You know, probably a three, at least a three inch minnow, three to four inch minnow. Trolling the jig on the brake, going back. Look at that dude. Oh. And Dan at uh, White River Air says, this lake is loaded with these fish. And I believe them. Chunky walleye like this. Good solid fish, look at him flare his gills. Oh. There he goes. Over the net, buddy. This lake is wicked. This lake is wicked. Now, and, and one of the good things is, right now, the water's cold, right? The water's 58, 59 degrees. That's still what I call cold water. Um, and your outfitters, they'll get you into these places. They'll set you up with all the live bait you, you need. You pretty much should bring in live bait into a place like this. If the walleye are going gangbusters, then yeah, you can get away with using artificials, but I always have a backup. So in, the, in this cold water period, bring just minnows. And then when it comes to June, July, and, and August, bring minnows, leeches, and worms. That might be a pike, he popped it. It's a walleye. It's a walleye, finally one that popped. See this, now the wind just picked up, this little wee bit of wind, and that fish hit different. Even with this slight increase in wind speed, walleye will definitely change their feeding routine. I'm now seeing the fish higher up the bottom, even with the high sun. Trolling the jig with the rod tip up high and a higher lift and drop seem to be the ticket. This key number seems to be about holding in nine and casting into a five or six feet and just kind of working it back. I could probably just straight drift here too, but I'm not seeing a lot on the bottom on the chart here, so it's hard to tell. I think they're very spread out on this break. Don't you look at my minnow. Aquatic birds like loons are very important to an angler. They need to eat every day to survive. When you see a loon diving, it's usually feeding. And guess what? They feed on bait fish, the same food source as predator fish. Follow the feeding birds, find the bait, and find the fish. Yeah, I got a minnow on here, buddy. Just stay away, okay? Get your own deal. Uh-oh. <laughs> I dropped my, that felt very pikish. That was very, very aggressive. Come here, loon, take that thing. These fish are incredible. Oh, they got power, these fish, man. They got, well, no wonder they're all big. Oh, that's a nice walleye. That is a nice walleye. I mean, they're all nice, but that is a nice walleye. Turn them around. 
Get them coming towards the net without getting too much out of the water. Scoop! Boy, they're nasty. Look at them, they're all defensive, these walleye. They get in their defensive position. They're both the same. Uh, he's bigger. He's bigger. <laughs> Ooh, baby. Outpost camps produce. Look at that. Oh, that's God's gift to Northern Ontario right there. I'm on a tiny lake in the Algoma region of Ontario. My job today is to see if there's a viable fishery on one of the many lakes that White River Air has access to. It's a nasty job, and I get to do it. Oh, trolling the jig up the break. The old trolling the jig trick, eh? Something to always keep in mind when jig fishing is a slight change can make a huge difference. Today I'm constantly changing from pink to orange, from one eighth to one quarter ounce, adding white or chartreuse, and even changing my minnow size. As well, my method of fishing the jig will always change. I'll vertically drop the jig directly below the boat, I'll zigzag with the electric, and even motor troll with the Merc, allowing the jig to swim along the contour. Not only are these subtle changes effective, but it keeps an angler's mind constantly working. There's another key. Remember, remember when you're up north and the water temps are 60s or uh, like all of 50s and maybe up to 60. Fish are shallow. You, you don't have to go down to 20 feet, 30 feet to, uh, you know, try and troll these fish up. They stay, they stay shallow because the water temps stay cool up here. Let's get back at her, trolling Pete. Got a biter. Yep, another walleye. Another three and a half pounder at least. Look at these things. Man. Ooh, big nasty beasts. Oh, three and a half, my butt. I, I thought he was a little a little three and a half or well yeah, this fish is bigger than that. Yeah, a lot bigger than that. What a beauty again. Old and beautiful. They get so defensive. That's their way, man. That's their way to stop. Yeah, maybe a four. Curved four. Look at that curved body. This week's hotspot is a break line on Burton Lake. The waypoint on your screen will get you there. At first glance, this certainly doesn't look like a walleye hotspot, but drop a jig down there when the water is in the high 50s and hopefully you'll have the same success that I had. Remember, this is one of 30 gorgeous lakes that White River Air has access to for fishing and hunting. Trust me, there are walleye up here that have never seen a jig and minnow. For more hotspots like this one, check out fishingcanada.com. Okay, I'll take that. I'll take that as a fish. <laughs> Another gorgeous fish. Another just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Algoma walleye. Look at that thing. Oh. oh man. Yeah, you don't like Petey, do you? Do that circle right into my net. It's just like we choreographed it, young fella. Okay. <laughs> you said walleye aren't feisty. <laughs> if you don't have blood on your hands when you're walleye fishing, you weren't walleye fishing. You weren't catching them. Because that's what he's doing right now. He's trying to cut me up. He is trying to slice and dice me. Look at him. Mm -hmm. Shake it. Get me back. I'll get you back. But how about that right there? We're getting back. Oh, I'm gonna try to rig. A, I was gonna try and rig another rod up, and I got caught by a fish. I saw a couple fish on the screen, and that's a nice walleye. It's another beauty walleye. Another gorgeous walleye, I should say. Another beautiful, consistent walleye. It's almost like you're catching the same fish. These things are so perfect. Oh, oh, I love you fish. 
You are scary nice. Yeah. This is a walleye fisherman's dream here, folks. A little wee lake like this. Pumping out big, big, big walleye like this. Why wouldn't you be tough if you got gills that flare like that, a fin that sticks up like that? All the nasty parts, teeth like a, I won't even be able to open his mouth up probably, but like a little devil horns on the nose. Cool. Put them back. Hey, easy. Look at that. Look when they flare those gills like that. That's sharp, by the way, folks. Right there, you cut your hands on that every time. Oh, he's ugly. Move that net out of the way for you. Ooh, this is amazing. Ha. I'm loving it. I don't want to ever go home. I want to live here. This has been an incredible day. I set out to test the walleye fishing on a fly-in lake for the possibility of a future outpost camp, and the result, well, you saw it. Fantastic. Fishing mission accomplished. To get to today's great fishing location, I headed north on Highway 400 to Highway 69. At Sudbury, I headed west on Highway 17 to the town of White River. I then boarded a float plane at White River Air, which took me to Burton Lake. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Ram Trucks. Nothing works harder than a Ram. Stearns, trusted on the water since 1952. Mercury Outboards, number one on the water. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine.